Hello and welcome to DevNet Create and this session on Tech for Good. I'm Al Lin and my team and I invent Tech for Good for Cisco. In the Future Product Innovation and Engineering Group, or FPI. So, a little bit about myself. Um, I have been a Vice President of Engineering in Cisco's Emerging Technology and Incubation Group, also a VP in Cisco's Chief Technology and Architecture Office. And believe it or not, I've done tech for good as a general in the US Army. I, I really do have the greatest job in the world. So I invent new things, that's what I do. Just this month alone, I worked on digital identity, firefighting, drones, maintenance, augmented re reality, just to name a few. And I really enjoy solving the impossible problems. And I'm sure I share that passion with many of you in tech for good. Let me share a couple of ideas I've been kicking around. Uh, let's just tackle some really hard problem. Something impossible to solve. How about, mm, I don't know, human bias. So human beings are wired for survival and our brains create shortcuts to speed up our decision-making. Unfortunately, many of those shortcuts are flawed logic. In fact, we have about 188 of these shortcuts. So just to give you an idea of what, what this looks like, we'll just pick out a couple uh, that really affect the workplace. So if you look to the right, you see observer effect. So in essence, one of our quick uh, uh, means of uh, noticing people is called the observer effect. We notice the people that we look for. And who are we looking for? Well, we're looking for people that look like us. And we do not take notice or we take less notice of those that are not looking like us. So that's, that's a bias. And to curb that bias, you really have to understand that that actually exists. Most people don't recognize this, and so they can't counter it. So next time you're in a large room of people, which may not be any time real soon, but just check yourself. Who do you say hello to, and who do you bypass? You probably tend to say hello to the people that look a lot like you. Another one, stereotyping. I think everybody's heard of this one. This is an obvious bias. It's built in gross characterization of a group of people. People of a given group, kind of, this is really tribal, that uh, either have a good or bad influence based upon the group because of the way we've been taught, what we believe, or what we've experienced to create this shortcut in our minds. This is built into all of us. Uh, can we change something that's built into every human being? Well, let's look at solving the impossible. So what's the opportunity? So I think the opportunity is really due to COVID. We've got millions of people that are working through video systems like this one. So how can we solve this human bias using a video product? I mean, what do we do? So remember the two biases we talked about? A lot of them could be changed based upon technology that has to do with video presence. So how do we curb our natural tendency towards, towards bias? Let's take a look at what we might be able to do. So instead of using a cat head, what if we use something that we could change bias with by presenting to you something that looks a lot like you? So technology, as you know, exists to really change your appearance. So what would happen if we use technology for good to change your appearance? so that the person that you're talking to, you present a picture of someone that looks more like them. So you decrease their bias. So one of the ways to do that is through some technology called um, deep fake, but that's normally thought of something that's bad, right? And there's also the opportunity for somebody to really copy that, that look. So you have to have something different in front of that technology. And that's this particular uh, thing that we worked on this year. It's called human identity verification. The, the project was called Bodyguard. So in essence, what it does is take everything your device knows about you and your networks and everything around you and decides, okay, I'm dealing with the same person. So it decreases the need for any kind of a password or CAPTCHA 
because it takes everything it knows about you and decides you are you and you are the same person and you are a human being. So if we can do that and still maintain your privacy, which this also does, then we might have something. So now we've been able to say, you're dealing with the same person that you always have dealt with before because of this technology. And let's combine that with another technology that's considered bad, which is deep fake. So deep fake is a technology that uh, was really kind of made famous by Jordan Peele when he has a spot on uh, way of talking like the president. And through deep fake technology was made everybody believe that he was talking for the president. And I'll show you a quick clip if you haven't seen this before, so you understand how a little bit how the technology works. Now, see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. This is a dangerous time. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. That's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. It may sound basic, but how we move forward, the age of information is gonna be the difference between whether we survive or whether we become some kind of dystopia. Thank you. Stay woke. So as you can see, the, 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 the images and everything you just saw looked real, but you knew because of the context that it wasn't really the president that was talking. But imagine now that you are doing a WebEx call and all of a sudden you saw somebody and they were uncomfortable. And so you projected a visual that was more comfortable to them, something that decreased their bias. And perhaps working from home now as a full-time person, this could help uh, de increase your chances for maybe promotions or those type of things because the bias wouldn't exist. So the technology is the, the human identity, the ability for video plus deep fake. So what's the opportunity? Well, the problem's human bias, the opportunity, future work, video conferencing. A technology solution, the merge of human identity verification and deep fake. Think about it. And let's continue to push, push the limits of what's possible for tech for good. Just a thought piece that I hope you enjoyed. Stay woke, DevNet. Thank you.